We'd like to welcome you again for a, a special show or a special presentation from Pikeville Independent Schools. Typically, we're joining you with our uh, principals forum on behalf of Pikeville Independent Schools, but uh, not only is it a special time of the year with the Christmas season, it's almost uh, uh, a, a special uh, time within education because as you've probably uh, heard or been inundated with the news media concerning assessment and test scores within the past month and uh, just tons and tons of data uh, uh, being published regarding how students uh, are doing uh, across the Commonwealth. Uh, from elementary school all the way through the high school years. Well, uh, ask Mr. Belcher, a special guest today. Uh, Mr. Belcher, uh, I'd like to say congratulations to uh, this guy on becoming our new instructional supervisor with Pikeville Independent Schools this year. We're certainly happy to have him. Not only uh, does he work in this capacity, Mr. Belcher is also our district assessment coordinator. So uh, he's uh, uh, not only intelligent about uh, mathematics and the area that uh, of teaching that he won, uh, of course, the highly publicized Milken Award for this past year. He's also uh, extremely knowledgeable about uh, the new unbridled learning system uh, that's used with Kentucky's Commonwealth uh, regarding assessment and how we're uh, assessing our students. Uh, across the curriculum and uh, Mr. Belcher it's certainly a pleasure to have you today and sharing your expertise and knowledge on the new assessment system. Well Mr. Green thank you for the introduction. Uh, <clears throat> you've given me quite a bit to live up to today so I'll try to do my very best. Um, but uh, like Mr. Green mentioned the uh, unbridled uh, learning system or uh, assessment accountability system is what's new in Kentucky this year. It's enough new that we feel like that uh, we need a special segment on it. And, uh, and it's enough um, in terms of pervasive beyond the school boundaries to the actual community itself um, that we feel like that, that there needs to be more information out there in the form of something like this. Um, the purpose of today is to do just that, to uh, help our school community understand what our new assessment and accountability system is about. Uh, the different attributes of that and how it's going to affect our students and, uh, and our parent, uh, parents also. Um, first question that, that we go to with this is <clears throat> why a new system? And um, what happened is around 2009 uh, legislators passed Senate Bill 1. Uh, Senate Bill 1 um, focused on uh, rigorous standards, more rigorous standards also focused, uh, focused on um, uh, a different test. Now why did, why did legislators even begin to look at this? Um, <clears throat> what they were hearing from community members also from state, uh, across the state, was that our, our current assessment system was not tied into college and career readiness like educators, parents, students would like to see. It was almost as if that assessment system was happening over here to the side while everyone else was kind of still thinking about college and career ready and that's what was really important. And so legislators heard that message, also uh, heard the idea that <clears throat> Common Core was coming down the pike, so in terms of national standards. And so those were being developed along uh, the, the same time that the bantering about college and career readiness and the disconnect between our state assessment and that. So legislators uh, looked at this and, and they said, well, we're going to go ahead and be proactive about this. And so more rigorous standards, new state test, and more focused on college and career readiness. And that was the whole purpose of, of designing a new test, now called KPREP. Is, is what uh, what the acronym is for that Kentucky Performance Rating uh, for education, uh, Educational Progress. Um, <clears throat> two years later, Kentucky adopted the Common Core Standards, and now uh, we are the first state to have actually tested on Common Core. Um, first state also uh, to, to test, but last year be began the first school year that Common Core was introduced into the classroom in Kentucky. Um, so it's, it's that transition that has happened. Just came back uh, from a meeting in Chicago and a lot of other states uh, are nowhere uh, near uh, as far along in implementing Common Core. So it is a little bit different uh, where we are at compared to other, other states. But because of that, um, that's why we're here. So the thing that we wanted to look at today 
was why the new system and go a little bit beyond what I just said. So I'm going to go to the PowerPoint to try to explain this a little bit more. And I'll go to the second slide here. What was happening before results came out, which our results were uh, delayed quite a bit this year. Um, we didn't see results until the 1st of November, which has put our teachers, uh, also put uh, school systems across the state in a little bit of alert for time to try to go ahead and improve for the rest of the year. But nonetheless, the promise is that these results will come out earlier next year. But <clears throat> prior to the results coming out, there was quite a bit of banter from the uh, State Department trying to prepare schools for what would be um, a possibility of a, an extreme dip uh, in performance. Um, the criticism of a past state test was that they were not aligned to, to college and career readiness uh, standards. Uh, meaning that what was not uncommon was that students were performing uh, quite well on a state test, but then when taking uh, a college test such as ACT, a college aptitude test such as ACT, uh, maybe not seeing the same level of performance on those. And so what has happened is KPREP, after being aligned to Common Core, um, officials have taken that, st statisticians have taken that and tried to look backwards from ACT benchmarks um, to try to map backwards a similar um, goal of performance even as early as third grade. So K-PREP test happening in third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, and so on up through eighth grade, the idea was is that you should see similar proficiency levels there in terms of percentages of students doing very well on, on ACT. So what I'm looking at here in the slide is that in trying to prep us for this drop in uh, proficiency, you can see a 76, a 70, and a 65 across the top of uh, the, the screen there, which is underneath reading. Uh, you can see that elementary, it's abbreviated ELEM with a 76 underneath that. And what 76 represents is 76 represents in 2010 and 11, 76 percent of students uh, in the elementary were considered proficient or higher in reading. But that same year, 40% of high school students met the ACT uh, benchmark in reading, which represents a 36-point discrepancy. And so when uh, the State Department has aligned these standards, or sorry, the test, to the point to where it will be more like ACT in terms of similar proficiency levels, they informed us that we could expect possibly a, a drop of 36 in performance there. Okay, so with that being said about that we were expecting drops, the one thing that I'm proud to report to you is that we're doing this segment after results have, have come out. And so what we're seeing here at Pikeville is that instead of 40 in our elementary school in reading, we saw proficiency rates of 63.4. In middle school, uh, proficiency rates of 66.7, which we would have expected uh, to be also there at that 40% level. Um, with that being said, we're proud that we're there. Now, we're always wanting to improve. We want proficiency rates at 100%, but uh, we did not drop like what was expected. But in terms of state, this 40% mark is where uh, many people did lie as far as the state average. Um, in terms of all grade levels, um, I'm proud to report that the top 5% is where our district fell. And uh, so we're very proud. Um, State college and career ready. So the whole whole new system is tried to be is geared towards college and career ready. So one thing that has happened is in 2010 and 11, we our college and career readiness rate among seniors was at 38 percent. What we have seen is last year's reporting has produced quite a bit of a jump at 47 percent. Um, so as a state, the emphasis on college and career ready and trying to uh, make efforts to, to align state testing to that is evidently making, making a difference. Uh, proud to report that our high school was at 68.8% for the 2011-12 year, uh, which is quite a bit higher than that 47% that we would have uh, expected to have seen. <coughs> Mr. Green, any questions along the way? Uh, now the the thing that we uh, come back from the PowerPoint. <clears throat> yeah, the the thing that I want to just share with parents and make sure our community members are aware of. 
uh, the level of rigor certainly increased uh, and uh, the commissioner and other state officials uh, tried to make sure that whether it was uh, the Chamber of Commerce at Rotary Clubs across the Commonwealth and others that how much more uh, rigorous this assessment was going to be than our prior uh, uh, or previous assessment. What again we want to point out to you is yes uh, we're Pikeville Independent Schools is thankful to be a district uh, of distinction and uh, certainly we were one of the top districts uh, within the state and as I would say to the commissioner, our community, our parents and our staff uh, certainly expect that regardless what assessments created that we will always be one of the leaders within our school district. Something that we need to try to also make sure that we make each of you aware when Mr. Belcher is talking about college and career readiness it's almost like, and I, I received this question from a newspaper reporter, that Pikeville Independent Schools, this is where our focus uh, lay prior to this new assessment occurring, that in the past not only were we focused on ACT scores, we were also focused on uh, advanced placement courses. You'll be made much more aware of an initiative across Kentucky with Kentucky Advance where math and science advanced placement courses are being paid for uh, by a program through Exxon or sponsored through the uh, Exxon Oil Corporation. Well, our school district has been paying for all of these areas regarding math, not only math and science, but each of the subject areas and advanced placement. We've really been pushing that or focusing on that. And earlier you heard uh, Mr. Belcher make the comment that our, our state and uh, some of their uh, diagnosticians and statisticians had simply looked at the ACT scores and trying to map backwards. Well, that's what our district's been doing with advanced placement courses in the ACT, trying to map backwards to make sure that the standards are rigorous across the board because instead of just meeting a minimum state standard, we have one goal, and that goal is really simple, and that's to prepare your son or daughter to be college and career ready. Well, we want to focus on being college ready, which is even uh, more rigorous, so that way it's left to your son or daughter as to if they're going to attend instead of a college or university saying, we're sorry, but you're not quite ready to attend our institution yet. Thank you, Mr. Green. Um, <clears throat> what we'd like to do next is play just a short video that uh, Jefferson County Public Schools uh, put out a communication to their uh, school community called Raise the Bar. And uh, all school communities across the state are dealing with some of the same issues that, that, that we all are, and that's trying to raise the bar. Um, and the realization is is that it's going to take more than just students and teachers. It's going to take the community itself and the buy-in of the region. Um, so we're going to go to that segment and uh, play that for you to view so that you can see what uh, actually the largest school district in the state of Kentucky, how they're pitching this to their school community. There are simple problems with simple solutions and there are complex problems with not so simple solutions. Some problems can be solved in a few seconds. Some problems haven't been solved in decades. Like why our country continues to fall behind other developed nations in math, reading, and science. Across our nation, colleges and universities are finding millions of high school graduates each year who aren't arriving with skills necessary to succeed, in need of hours of remedial courses just to catch up. And in the working world, employers say many high school students aren't equipped with the tools they need to start their careers. Kentucky remains behind much of the nation in post-secondary preparedness. In Jefferson County, less than half of our students are graduating college and career ready. This has brought our country to a crossroads. Assign blame to the problem or solve it. 
The solution to the education equation began with a collaboration unlike anything ever seen in our country's educational history. For years, states held their own assessments based on their own standards, creating inequality across the country. And even those states, believed to be high achievers, fell short in comparison to other developed nations. What resulted was a simple concept, an ambitious concept, a new compass for education, all states adopting a common set of rigorous standards, standards aligned in such a way that students graduate prepared for post-secondary education, standards that allow states to determine how they stack up against each other and the world. With the support of local districts and their communities, Kentucky was the first state to adopt the new national standards. Kentucky had a choice. Kentucky chose to lead. Which group of students did we want to ask to wait to begin preparing to be college and career ready? This is a new way of learning, a new way of teaching, and a new path to academic achievement. The standards were developed to meet the same level of rigor as some of the top performing places in the world, like Japan and Singapore. They were developed by teachers, researchers, and leaders in higher education and business, people who know where students need to be to succeed. This isn't the latest fad, this is a new era in education. The first two standards introduced in the classroom were for reading and mathematics. Next year, we'll add science and social studies. The new standards challenge my students to a greater depth of understanding. Instead of memorizing facts and formulas, they develop critical higher level thinking when approaching content so they can tackle tougher concepts as they progress. Yeah. They are tougher standards. A lot tougher. A lot tougher. They push me to my limits. The curriculum is more rigorous for all students at all levels. For all students. Because I'm not teaching subjects in isolation anymore, my students get the answer to that age-old question, when am I ever going to use this, on a daily basis. And most importantly, the standards create a staircase of increasing complexity, ending in college readiness. So when I graduate, so when I graduate, so when I graduate, I'm prepared for both college and career. Kentucky was the first state to adopt the Common Core state standards. What you may not know is that Kentucky was the first to test on them. At the end of the 2011-2012 school year, and now we wait to see our new scores, how we stack up against the standards. Be forewarned. There will be some shock and confusion when parents receive the scores in the mail. There really is no way to accurately compare the new K-PREP test with the previous Kentucky Core Content Test. However, we expect that in the short term, proficiency rates among students will be lower than what we've seen on the old test, perhaps anywhere from a 10 to 40 point drop. Not because our students became less educated over the last year, but because the bar has been raised. Our charge is to get our students to reach the higher standard. The bar is high, but it can be reached. The question is, what are we willing to do to get there? JCPS has adjusted its curriculum to make sure that it is aligned with the standards and the district's vision that all students graduate prepared. It is a part of the district's vision 2015 strategic plan that plan has four focus areas. Increased learning, graduation and beyond, safe, supported schools, and stakeholder involvement. All four of these areas and the corresponding 36 strategies specifically addressed areas of need that will help our students reach their full potential. But they cannot do it alone. You are a part of this new equation. I need your support. I need your support. I need your support. Whether or not you have a student in your family, what happens in our schools affects you. If our schools succeed in creating a more educated workforce, our community will be more competitive in the global marketplace. More businesses will take a more serious look at Louisville. More people at work means a growing economy. And that benefits all of us. This is about being a part of something bigger than ourselves. And it will take all of us to help our kids reach our goals. Teachers, 
students, parents, policymakers, community leaders, and the business community. Everyone has a role in this team effort. Get involved and let's support all of our students. We're expecting more of them. We must expect more of ourselves. Everyone working together for a common goal, making common core work for Louisville. The bar has been raised. The goal must be met. These are our kids. This is our legacy. This is their future. This is my future. My future. My future. Be a part of the solution. They did a really good job of also tying to people's emotion. And um, I've always been a believer that uh, people buy in not necessarily to logic always, but also a tie to emotion. And taking some statements from the video, um, <clears throat> I want to go and do that, but I also want to say to you something about this. You as a parent, um, as standards continue to get implemented with fidelity, you know, to, to a greater degree, expect that your student will come home frustrated more at times. You know, our term now is productive struggle. Um, you know, it's at that point of frustration many times that learning happen, happens. And um, <clears throat> so we want to keep pushing in that way, but some of the, the, the statements that w were made in the video is, you know, what are we willing to do to get there? Uh, you know, the, the county of, of Pike County especially, you know, we are facing many uh, things in our region. And, you know, what are we willing to do to get there? Um, you know, it's assessment, but it's more than about assessment. It's about the education of this region. Um, the education of this region bringing in business uh, and, and, and the continued growth of our area. It's dependent upon so much more than just talking about an accountability model. And um, another, another thing that was said, um, they cannot do it alone, t alone, talking about the students. It's going to take more than just them. It's going to take more than just their teacher, more than they're just their administrator. It's going to take parents, uh, business, uh, community members. Another statement, if our schools succeed, our communities succeed. So talking about what I just mentioned, being a part of something bigger than ourselves. You know, the human uh, condition, we can really buy into something bigger than ourselves. Um, it gives us something to strive for. Uh, teachers, students, parents, policy makers, community leaders, and the business community, get involved and let's support all of our students. <clears throat> this goes beyond the bounds of Pikeville City Schools. It goes into our surrounding schools. Um, if our Pike County succeeds, so does the town of Pikeville. Um, we're expecting more uh, of them, talking about our students, we must expect more of ourselves. You know, uh, that expectation goes to, to the adults and everyone around those children as well. These are our kids, they said. This is our legacy. This is their future. There is no other time for us to concentrate on anything else but where these students are now in their future. And then the last statement I wanted to bring from the video, be a part of the solution. My hope for our community and our surrounding area is that we'll be part of the solution, no longer looking at a school in criticism, but looking at a school in what is being done and how can, how can I help. And uh, you know, when bar is raised, those are the kinds of attitudes that, uh, that, that can maybe get us there. <clears throat> okay, I'd like to go to the PowerPoint slide, um, if we could, and we'll go ahead and get into what does the accountability model look like. Um, Accountability model is complex compared to, to systems we've had in the past. There's actually five main components listed here, achievement, gap, growth, college career readiness, and graduation rate. Um, what uh, our schools for the first time saw um, is that all five areas, if you're at the high school level, were feeding into an overall score. And then what was new this year and something that was scary at first was once that overall score is obtained, all schools in Kentucky, all districts in Kentucky, their overall score was taken and ranked in order. And this first year, it was guaranteed that any, um, that there would at least be 69% of, of schools that would fall below proficiency. Um, 
that was a scary thing for schools. Regardless of how I do, I'm going to, you know, I've got no 69% is going to fall below that. Um, <clears throat> now, what will happen is once these percentile marks have been reached, so 70th percentile, we know where it is now in terms of an overall score, that score is going to be taken and it's going to be used um, for next year's goal of, of what is considered proficient. So when I look at these percentiles and I see distinguished is at 90th percentile, proficiency 70th to 89th, needs improvement is below 70th in terms of labels for schools, next year that's going to look a little bit different. We're going to actually have a cut score uh, for the overall score and what that means is is that 100% of schools theoretically could fall into the proficient level. Um, it's not expected that that happened, but that could happen, which was different. This is the difference between a normative model, we call it, and a criterion reference model. So we are shifting from a normative percentile rank model this year for the first year only to a criterion reference uh, system next year. The, the difference that we're going to see from the previous slide is that yes, there are five areas, but those, not all five areas are applied to every grade level. Um, as you can see from this slide, the elementary um, is actually only achievement gap and growth. It would make sense, I guess, to us that college and career readiness, uh, the measures for that being like ACT, those kinds of measures, is not going to be in an elementary school as well as graduation rate being specific to a high school. And so these weights were used again to get that overall score that, that stu uh, schools were then ranked by. Uh, middle school, we can see achievement gap growth and college and career readiness. One might ask, you know, why is college and career readiness an attribute of middle schools? Well, middle school for the first time takes uh, what I'm going to call an ACT family sequence of tests, the first test being Explore. Um, our seventh graders, we pay for them to actually take that test in preparation for eighth grade, but our eighth grade, for accountability purposes, takes Explore for the first time. And that Explorer, which later leads to ACT, is used uh, to calculate a college and career readiness rate for our schools that are uh, in the junior high range of, of grade level. And then high school, yes, does get all five measures with this. Okay, now after looking at how these are subdivided in the weights, um, I just want to real briefly talk to you about what does it mean achievement, what does it mean gap, growth, and so on. Achievement is what we traditionally in years past have thought of. It's just testing. Um, we'll talk briefly here in a minute about what types of tests are offered. Gap is something that's new to us. Um, this is students that have traditionally performed uh, lower in the state of Kentucky as well as across the nation that are being targeted. Um, students that are in African American uh, populations, Hispanic, Native American, special education, low income, and uh, ESL students. Uh, a, a big focus on making sure that these students are not falling uh, through the cracks. And so the gap is, is measuring the, the performance of those students. Growth is something that, that folks have had a little bit of a hard time understanding. It's not quite like just typically measuring what a student did in one school year as opposed to the next school year. It's actually looking at where a student falls among a peer group. Um, for instance, if a student takes a test in, in year one, we look at peers around them that scored similarly to them, and then you take that peer group and you look at them again in year two. And then where did that student rank in that, that group? And so this is a percentile rank for growth that's a little uncommon to just like a pre-test, post-test uh, type of measurement. It was anticipated that the growth measurement would be reported on student reports, but it was not reported this year, but that will be reported. It's anticipated for next year. Um, college and career readiness, uh, like I mentioned with middle school, that's um, with the Explore test. In the high school, college and career readiness is focused around uh, ACT. There's also a test called Compass. And then also with career, there's technical certification tests that students may take that can uh, help to classify them as, as career ready. And so this is done in that way. And then graduation rate is a school's uh, uh, number that kind of helps to uh, define were they able to retain students all the way to graduation. And so all of those five measures hit the high school and then we're weighted for that overall score. This slide is talking to us a little bit about uh, for next year. 
Um, what we're going to see here is that with the 70th percentile, the 90th percentile, and the 95th percentile, as you see on the chart, that we now have scores to shoot for versus just percentile ranks. So what we can see is that Pikeville Elementary scoring a 69.5 this year for overall can anticipate to be in the 90th percentile with just a slight gain uh, to the 69.8 from that point, from the 69.5 uh, mark. Um, what will have to happen uh, for next year that we'll be talking about just in a minute is to be a district of distinction, we'll still have to raise our scores uh, by what we call an annual measurable objective. But for next year, for our, our elementary school to be in the 90th percentile, they have to raise by that .3 mark. Um, for the middle school to be in uh, a distinguished 90th percentile mark, you can see that uh, they were at 64.9, or sorry, at 62.7. They will need to raise to 64.9, a moderate increase. And then the high school at 65.4, uh, for them to be in the uh, 90th percentile, 64.4 will be uh, needed, which they are actually already exceeding. So they'll have to at least do as well as they did uh, this year. Um, and then as a district, for us to land in that district of distinction mark for that 95th percentile, we're at 65.8, we'll need to be at 65.2. But it's a little bit deceptive in that even though we're already over that mark, we will have to increase by 0.5 to be called a district of distinction. Uh, so we could still score the same score and not be called a district of distinction because this model expects that we improve every year. Okay, taking the information that we got just prior, you know, in order to be proficient, distinguished, um, next year it will be solely rely, uh, relying on a cut score. Um, but in order for us to, 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 to reach some other labels that we were able to reach this year, which was a school of distinction, which meant that we fell in the 95th percentile or higher, we're going to have a tougher uh, go this next year. Um, and this is what we're trying to anticipate and look for areas that we can still improve. Uh, under this model, it continues to get harder and harder in the sense that as you're reaching uh, you know, that, that top spot, um, you're still trying to improve. Um, but with School of Distinction, we will also have to improve our cut score by a .5, called an Annual Measurable Objective. And not only that, but we'll have to make sure that our graduation rate at the high school level is meeting its goal, which has a slight increase, as well as that we're having a participation rate uh, that we should have um, in terms of students testing. But um, it's going to be harder for us to be a school of distinction in the sense that we do still have to improve and, and, and we are at a, at a pretty high score already. Um, high performing school works the same way, uh, that, that you do still have to improve to be able to be labeled that. A high progress school is a label for schools that, who may not fall into that uh, uh, classification of distinction or high performing, but they're showing marked progress. As you can see, top 10% of the highest progress schools. And so that gives them a label. Priority schools are what we traditionally have thought of as low performing schools. In order to fall into that category, a school has to not show progress for at least two years. And then a focus school is, is a, a worry to some uh, in that you can become a focus school in how your gap population is performing. So if a gap population is in the lowest 10% of all schools, you may still be a school um, of distinction in terms of your percentile rank. But, but you cannot be labeled a school of distinction if you are first a focused school or district. And so GAP is very important. It's very important about us trying to, to, to address the needs of our students that have traditionally performed uh, not as well. Okay, up to this point, um, it's, it's given you an overview of what the accountability model is and how it's a little bit different. There are five areas that we've tried to address like we talked about. The focus is at 100% of students being college and career ready. But what we're moving to here is, is, is what are the tests that are actually given? And you can see that the X's on the, the table here are marking like for instance that reading is given across the, the grade levels, third through eighth. Uh, the same is true in mathematics. And I didn't say earlier, but when they calculate growth, growth is actually only calculated in the areas of reading and mathematics. And the reason being is those are tested every year which allows them to be able to, uh, to calculate that. But you can see science, for example, fourth and seventh. The writing category is a little bit difficult at first to read on this table, but writing is actually broken apart into editing mechanics and on-demand writing. 
and you can see like for instance that in the uh, fifth grade year that uh, that is only on-demand writing that's being tested but in the sixth grade year it is not only on-demand but it's also editing mechanics uh, writing is, a, is a, uh, something that has cropped up this year for many schools across the state you can imagine writing kind of like an art uh, being very hard to teach and, and to help students giving that feedback to help them get better uh, writing is an area that, that we have found that we're trying to improve on. Uh, you can also look at end of course exams uh, in the areas of English 2, Algebra 2, Biology, U.S. History. Like we've said, this is, that was new for the first time last year. This is high pressure for students. It's, it's serving as their semester exam, uh, which can count to up to 20 percent of their uh, class grade. And so students were uh, very much bought into those tests at the end of last year. Um, and you can see that that's going to happen at possibly at multiple grade levels depending on what grade level that student is when they take those courses. Um, and then the ACT family, like I mentioned, Explore is in the eighth grade for accountability. We do also uh, offer that for our seventh grade students. Plan, tenth grade, and then finally ACT is taken in the eleventh grade uh, with the juniors. Okay, I'll go to the next. Slide. As you're going yep. to that uh, slide there too, Mr. Belcher, it's something that we just want to reiterate or, or try to uh, point out to parents. The, the whole goal, aside from giving you the overview of the new assessment system and, and providing an, an idea of what's actually going on as far as assessing your son or daughter or grandchild, it's, it, the, the main point is this, is to make certain that we don't wait until your son or daughter or that student is in high school. We want to make sure that as early as possible, you should have received, <coughs> excuse me, the results of your son or daughter's scores at, by this point. And I, I know that the guidance counselors have been meeting with parents, going over and reviewing that information. If you don't have that, please, I would encourage you to contact Pikeville Elementary School or Pikeville High School, if your son or daughter attends either one of those, you do not have, <coughs> excuse me, that score information, or if you don't have the results, so that way we can get on this as quickly as possible about what are the areas of need that, that we need to focus on for this student, or what is it that, that if they're uh, not scoring at a proficient level in any subject area, what is it we need to do to advance the ball down the field? Well, we want to do the same thing with your son or daughter, making sure that we help them to advance in whatever area that there's a particular need. And if not, they may be doing off the charts work well in every subject area. Well, we want to make sure that we challenge them even more so, whether it's in our gifted and talented program, whether it's in advanced placement courses, or even across different grade levels or disciplines. So uh, just wanted to touch base on that. 100% agree, Mr. Green. Um, we'll go back to this slide real quickly. <clears throat> okay, I'm not going to spend very much time with you on this, but uh, this slide was presented to you because this PowerPoint will be um, posted on our district website as well as the school websites. You can go to under parents and then assessment resources that, that, that you'll be able to access this and look at this in more detail. Under assessment resources you're going to see several other links that we'll share with you right here at the end. But uh, just a couple of places to highlight here, uh, like Mr. Green mentioned, you know, probably, uh, and I, I say this with reservation because KPREP uh, has been uh, more aligned with ACT standards, or let me say it this way, a bar equivalent to ACT and it's aligned with Common Core and so anything that you're getting back regardless of the grade level for your child whether they be in fourth grade or eighth grade it is indicative of where they are currently and and are there those places that, that we need to provide enrichment or help but ACT the Explore Plan and ACT Suite are so important for your student this is what's going to uh, provide colleges with information uh, about placement once they're there. Not only that, but first off admission and then if there's any possibility for scholarship. And so I know that this is something that hits home uh, when we talk about that. Um, one other test that's mentioned on here, the Compass, is something that's offered two times uh, uh, for the year as a senior, free of charge to seniors. Compass has normally been something that's been given at local uh, colleges. Uh, 
maybe a community college that's used Compass to help place a student uh, maybe beyond uh, a remedial class. But we now have the ability to give Compass on site to high school seniors and that again can be given twice a year. Only students that do not meet benchmark in ACT have the option of taking Compass, but this is a nice option to have. Um, the ASVAB uh, is something that I feel like at times our students maybe overlook. Um, ASVAB can also be used to help qualify a student as career ready. Um, and it's an AFQT score is what it's called of 50. But um, our students doing their very best and you from the home also um, providing uh, the support for them to understand that this is not only about placement in military, but it's also about uh, placement as, as career ready. And then, um, so, so looking at that in a more uh, concerted way. Um, also, as we look down further, one other test I want to highlight is the National Assessment of Educational Progress, the NAEP test. Our fourth graders, our district was chosen to take the NAEP test this year. Um, and that is really an honor in and of itself. But NAEP will not actually be reported to us for individual student performance, but we'll be um, contributing to the body of knowledge for our, our nation and our state as far as uh, uh, statistics to help us know where we are as a state and nation in the areas of math, science, social studies, and as it, as it outlines there. What we um, are going into next is just a real, uh, we'll try to go through this quickly with you, but it's some examples of uh, some of the student reports that you'll be receiving depending on what grade level your student is. Um, this is an example K-PREP student report, so this would be, I think this is an example as fourth grade level. So when you're looking at these reports, what you're seeing is, is your student in terms of a bar graph. It's the wider bar graph on the left. What we see here is that there's actually three areas that were tested with K-PREP in this grade level. That'll depend on what grade level you're at, how how many uh, subject areas are represented. Under reading, for instance, you can see a bar graph there that is a little bit wider. That represents the student. And then over one, you're going to see uh, the school, then over one more district, and then also the state. So you can get a pretty quick visual of where your student falls in, 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 in relation to the school, the district, and the state. The goal is for every student to be at proficient. So when you're looking at these bar graphs and you're seeing possibly an apprentice or a novice as it is in this instance, you do want to realize that this is just one test on one day, but this is possibly indicative like Mr. Green mentioned earlier for, for you to talk to that teacher, for you to talk to the school about ways that, you know, how's my student doing otherwise? Are there other reasons for me to be concerned about ways that we need to start helping them? Okay, underneath the bar graphs, you're going to see performance level uh, indicators, and these are just brief uh, paragraphs, as you see, that, that are supposed to give a little snippet of what a student at that performance level is able to do. Um, so you can look, for instance, under the mathematics portion, and you might see a statement like, a student scoring novice can solve multi-digit addition problems, and then you'll continue to see additional statements after that. So that is just to give you a little brief uh, view of that. Okay, I'll move to the next slide. The next slide would represent like the second page of your K-PREP report. And what's different on this that I just want to make mention of is that you have national percentile rankings now. Uh, you can see a column listed that with the numbers 53, 45, and so on. Um, there are parts of the K-PREP test that are uh, referenced to national uh, statistics. And so this is going to give Kentucky something that we've not had in the past. It gives you a mark to, to say, well, it's not just in the state of Kentucky that I know how my child did, but this gives me something to understand about it at the nation at large. Um, supporting activities is what I want to draw your attention to most is these are a few statements that can give you ideas of maybe where to go next in terms of trying to support your student in, in the level that they may need help uh, in these areas. And then right at the bottom of the page, uh, students' Lexile and students' Quantile scores. Lexile uh, is a little more well-known than Quantile, but Lexile is a measurement of reading ability. And this allows not only you, but, your t but the teachers to choose readings for students that better meets the needs of where they are currently and then trying to, to build them up from there. Quantiles is a similar type of measurement, but it's in mathematics, and you're going to see two uh, websites listed there that you can also visit and also talk to your teachers about, uh, your students' uh, teachers about where, where, where you can help. 
So there's, there's quite a bit here that you can do that uh, you can help at home also. Okay, going to the next slide, what we're going to see is a sample explorer report. Like I mentioned, this is something you're going to see from your students that are both in the 7th and 8th grade. The report you get back from 7th uh, grade will be something that the school has purchased. But the reason for that being is that we're trying to expose students to this a year early so that they have that school year to work on areas that they need to bolster or improve before they face that test again their 8th grade year. Explore plan um, is a little bit odd in the sense that it's given at the beginning of the year. It's given in September each year. So the work that students do through their seventh grade year uh, will actually be tested right there at the first of the eighth grade year. And so it is very much a measurement of what work they've accomplished through their seventh grade year. But when you get this report, there's a couple areas you want to look at quickly. Um, you can see over to the left side under composite score and then you see some subject areas listed English, math, reading, and science. These give the breakout of the score that the student received on those subdomains. But if you come uh, over to the college readiness box, which is to your right of this, it's on the extreme right of the report in the lower corner there, you're going to see benchmarks listed. And it's those benchmarks that we're wanting all students to meet in all areas. Um, it's a little hard to see, I think, from, from there, um, but that, for instance, you know, science is listed as a 13 for this example student, but the benchmark for that is a 20. So in that particular area, you can see that a check box has been marked for below uh, for that. But then in other areas, you can see that that student is above or that, that they're at. In other words, they met that benchmark. And so benchmarks is the first thing you want to draw your eyes to. Another important piece of information on the report that you want to look at is ACT provides an estimated plan composite score. So if you look at the, the box that's to the right and in the upper portion of, of the data there, uh, it gives your estimated plan composite score range. And so not only is it giving you the information of what's happening currently, but it's also giving a prediction of what might happen that 10th grade year when the student takes plan. Okay, if we can go to the next slide. <clears throat> Probably one of the most powerful parts of the Explore report um, uh, is this item analysis portion. So this would happen on a second page uh, of the report you were just looking at. And this is actually only in the area of English, but all areas are reported. But what you can see to the left side there is there's actually uh, numbers listed for each item on the test. So for instance, in English, we can count and we can see there that there were actually 40 items on that test. It's going to give the student's response and then what the correct response should have uh, been. Um, in this case, um, yeah. And uh, so then when I look at that, I'm going to be able to tell uh, with a copy of the test which the students are provided. Uh, this, is, this is very much different than about anything else that students take. You know, we don't typically get tests back to be able to do item analysis, but Explore and Plan are all about trying to get students more prepared to do well on ACT, and so that's the reason this is provided. So the students should receive a copy of that test, they'll have this item analysis, and then they can literally look at item by item at what they missed and then learn from that. And so one of the goals of the schools is to be able to teacher-led uh, actually be able to look in classrooms and look at these item analysis with students and, and try to help them improve. If, if I could just jump in there for a second, uh, the best ana analogy we could use or to give to you, it's if, if we're trying to get your, your student ready to take off successfully by the time they leave us, then when Mr. Belcher is referring to this Explore score being given at Pikeville High School in grade 7 and then of course the state requires it at grade 8 also. Well, What we're trying to do is you're just now coming onto the runway and before you get cleared for takeoff we got to make sure all these systems are checked. Well we're trying to do that with the Explore and we're trying to make sure that you're ready to begin that journey down the runway because then the plan will occur and we also give that plan in grade 9 and the state of course in grade 10 to get you ready for takeoff or lift off with that ACT at grade 11. So we're trying to make sure that you're ready for takeoff once you leave Pikeville High School, that you're ready to take off to a college or a university. And 
in doing so, the state refers to the system as EPASS. Well, all this is referring to is the Explore, the Plan, and the ACT. And we're trying to make sure that we're focused on you improving as a student at this point and not waiting for remediation or, or trying to make sure that we move you up once you're in high school. We're focused on this now. And uh, now with the new assessment system, it also even goes down to the elementary school to grade three to make sure that you're ready and on that trajectory to take off. So I just want to throw that in there with you. Absolutely. And, and you know, the thing, too, that's come, come as of lately, uh, probably at least within the last five years across our state, is so much more of an emphasis on dual credit courses. Um, and dual credit courses uh, always have ACT requirements with them. And so we have students that are taking dual credit courses as early as their junior year. So we want to even encourage you to take ACT outside of the state test that happens the junior year. Take it earlier. Uh, take it as quick as you can and, and take it as many times as seems reasonable. Uh, because the whole idea is to get you ready to be able to have those possibilities open to you. We don't want doors shut for you. Um, on this report, the one other item that I want to mention before we, before we leave it, it does have a box there to the right that says suggestions for improving your skills based on your scores. And that is an, an item you definitely want to look at also along with the item analysis that you're doing. Um, your teacher uh, in each subject area, and you know, by the time you get to explore, you're in the middle school area uh, or grade level, and so your teachers are uh, specialized at that point. So you're going to want to talk to, as a parent, as a student, the, the teacher of that particular area. So for instance, in this case, the English teacher. And they're going to be able to, to have uh, strategies for you, also possibly uh, ways for you to get uh, extra items to practice with. And uh, yeah, OK, I'll leave that one. <clears throat> Plan is we can leave quickly because it's very much similar to, to what we just looked at with the Explorer has a little bit of a different look, different color, I guess. But um, in terms of benchmarks, this time the college readiness uh, uh, box is located about middle of the form. It's down in the bottom there called college readiness. You're going to see benchmarks listed there as well. And then uh, to the left upper corner of the form, you can see what the student actually performed at uh, in those subdomain subject areas. And so again, you're looking to see if they're meeting benchmarks, checking the box if they met them. If they didn't, you know those are areas that you want to try to improve. And then again, for the first time in your student's career, unless they've taken ACT, ACT prior, for the first time as a ninth grader, unless you've taken the ACT prior, you're getting an estimated ACT composite score range up there in the right-hand corner uh, on the, the uh, yeah. Uh, in this case, I think it's listed as 19 to 23. And so for the first time now, you're seeing what you might would be able to perform uh, with that junior year. Um, <clears throat> now, another feature that, that you do want to look at before you leave this form, down in the bottom right-hand corner, profile for success. You know, students are, uh, you know, it's an exciting time, even as a parent, as a teacher, thinking about what they're going to do in the future and what their areas of interest are. And so in this case, this student is listed, I believe I can read, engineering and technology. And so what's provided there is a typical score range um, on ACT that a student at this point interested in education or engineering and technology might have scored. And so it gives that student a little indicator, not to dissuade them, not to say, oh, I, don't, I can't do that, but to look at them and say, if I want to do that, I'm going to need to improve this a bit. And it might fall within the range that they see they're right on the trajectory to do it as well. So that's a good indicator for parents and students to look at. Um, an ACT report, uh, this is, like we said, the final in the, in the suite of three. And um, so you're going to mm -hmm. see in a similar position on the report card a subdomain breakout. We can see that this student in English scored a 24. Um, with the, the college readiness benchmark, with this particular report, I'm trying to look to see with the report, it's about midline, a little bit above on the right hand side. It's a bigger box there. But you can see English, math, reading, and science, that we have benchmarks listed. And again, it looks a little different. It's not a check mark, uh, check mark or anything like that, but an X. But it, again, you're looking to see if you met that benchmark. Now, the thing that I need to at least say at this point, 
is in Kentucky there is a difference between ACT benchmark and CPE benchmark. Uh, the Council on Post-Secondary Education is responsible in Kentucky for setting benchmarks associated with say remedial college classes and so on. And so the ACT benchmarks in some cases uh, can be a bit higher than the CPE benchmark. Uh, for instance, uh, in the area of reading, the ACT benchmark is listed as a 21, where the uh, CPE benchmark for ACT is listed as a 20. Uh, the same thing is true with mathematics. You have a discrepancy where mathematics is listed as a 22 for the ACT benchmark, but for the CPE benchmark, it's 19. Now, what does that mean for your student? To be classified college ready in Kentucky, you have to meet the CPE benchmark which in the cases of reading and mathematics is slightly lower than the ACT benchmark. Some colleges have different uh, scores that are required for remedial courses, so sometimes we have to look at those depending upon where the student is headed. But yes, to be college ready, the ACT with the CPE benchmark. So in some cases, you may be classified as college ready by Kentucky, but you might actually fall below that benchmark by ACT. The compass, I at least put a slide in here for you to, uh, for me to at least speak to one more time. Uh, students that do not meet benchmark um, on the ACT and they are a senior. And let's say that December has come and gone and they have taken the test in December. That's about the last opportunity for seniors to get an ACT score that they will be able to get into colleges in time for admission and scholarship. Um, then they do, uh, if you did not meet benchmark, if the student did not meet benchmark by that time, then the Compass is offered to our students. Uh, it's a computer test. It's uh, not timed, but it is adaptive. And this, like I said, is given by many colleges to help place students in uh, courses, depending on where they are. But for the state of Kentucky, your Compass score can also classify you as college ready. And so we have had students the past two years that did not meet ACT benchmark, but with extra preparation and, and I, I guess a, a little more of a drive to do, to do better, they were able to meet that benchmark using the Compass test before they graduated, which left them in a position of going to college and being able to take courses beyond remedial courses. So the Compass test, being able to take it two times if needed, is a, is a huge um, um, positive for our seniors that, that are needing to try to meet that benchmark at the 11th hour. Okay, and we'll go to the last slide. Wanted to end the last slide today with college and career readiness because like we say, the, the, the whole idea is to get students to the next level. Uh, students are, are um, labeled as college ready if they meet, you can notice on the left hand side, they, if they meet benchmarks for ACT or like we mentioned, Compass. Coyote is an alternative test that we do not offer here at Pikeville, but some schools across the state are offering. So college ready is one classification. Career ready, like we mentioned, the armed service, the ASVAB, can be used to classify a student as career ready as long as they pass an industry certificate or something called a COSA. COSA is also uh, specific to students that are on career pathways. And then lastly, you can have students that can be both college and career. They've met their benchmarks in ACT, but they have also been on a career pathway that's led them to an industry certificate or COSA test. The thing that we want to be sure and say here is we want students to be looking more at not only being college ready, but also being career ready and then taking advantage of courses that we have at the school or possibly through our area techni technical centers that would allow them to be both college and career ready. And uh, we, we think that's an advantage for students to be labeled both. Okay, we're back to the, the next slide here, assessment and accountability links. There's two um, pages, that slides that we've provided for you that again, like I said, this will be uh, available to you on our website, both district and both schools, under the parents link and then assessment resources. But all of the things that we've said prior is probably more so to inform you about what the system is and then also to um, give you an idea of what reports you'll see and, and the things that you need to look at. But most importantly, the next segment that we'll end with is what are the things that you can do uh, to help, help your individual student. 
One thing that I've not mentioned here that you'll see at the very first of the assessment and accountability links is the Kentucky School Report Card. There's a link for that that you'll be able to click when you open the PowerPoint that will take you to that. The, the school report card is kind of a one-stop shop for the, the data or the results of, of our district uh, testing. You can also even look at other districts and compare, or if you're even listening the, to this from another district, you can look at your district. Um, underneath that also, the KDE site for Unbridled Learning, if you'll open that up, you're going to see other uh, links beyond uh, what's listed here, but also some of the links as well. So if you want to learn more about the accountability system, if there are portions of this that you didn't quite understand that we've gone over, that's a good link to go to. The third uh, uh, bullet down, Dr. Holliday's video to parents and about assessment. It's about a one minute video, really short, uh, that kind of sums up um, the commissioner's um, idea of why we uh, have the assessment accountability system that we do right now. Then frequently asked questions about assessment and accountability. Another great document for you to uh, access. I'll uh, go to the, s the last slide. A parent's guide to testing in Kentucky uh, is something worth looking at, especially if there were, like we say, portions of this that didn't, uh, didn't quite uh, make it through. And then also accountability, a parent's guide to accountability, a second document. These are fairly brief documents meant uh, for the parent. And then underneath that, and this gets back to what I was just saying uh, to start these last two slides, is the Kentucky Core Academic Standards. Um, we hope um, that you as a parent will not only uh, think of the responsibility of academic standards as the teacher's responsibility, but also yours to go and look at, you know, if my student's in fifth grade, what is it that my reading uh, teacher in fifth grade is, is going by right now. Is there things I can be doing at home that could help that teacher also? So the Kentucky Core Academic Standards, if you can go to that link, you're going to be able to see those, those, that kind of information. Um, underneath that, K-PREP test resources. I put for teachers and parents, too often we're leaving the parents out of this, the test resources also has um, items that can help your student be ready for that K-PREP test. Uh, it can have sample uh, open response items, possibly even rubrics that would be used to score those items. Uh, for instance, even a slide, or a, let me say this, uh, uh, you know, a, a measuring stick that the students will be using, say, on the seventh grade math uh, test or what have you. Um, so the different resources that the student could become familiar with in advance. And then lastly there, the release test items for K-PREP and end of course exams is very valuable for students to be able to go and look at prior to actually taking those tests. So students that are stressed out about end of course exams, teachers have already been working with them with the Quality Core resources. This is also another place that, the, that you as a parent could go and say, have you looked at this before? And then you might could pull some other items. Okay, and we'll leave the PowerPoint and come back to, to summarize. Um, <clears throat> probably the summary for us, Mr. Green, is like we said, I guess when the rubber meets the road, it's, it's not all about, you know, what, what, we're, what the rules we're playing by, but it's about what can parents do to help, uh, help their student. And uh, so like we said, one of those items is, is actually uh, going to the core content and looking at that. But other ideas, too, that we've got, we'll finish with. <clears throat> the, uh, so many times uh, I'm asked, what, what can I do? I want to help my son or daughter. What can we do to make sure that they're not only at or on grade level, but hopefully they're achieving even beyond that? And aside from just providing an overview, which I want to thank you, Mr. Belcher, for doing a, a detailed overview of the Commonwealth Accountability System or Unbridled Learning, we want to try to make sure that we provide, if we're all about continuous improvement for students, then we've got to get as many stakeholders on board as possible within our community to make sure that everyone knows what is it that we can do to help that student improve or get ready for the next level. We wanted to provide the links to this. They'll be on our school website. Not only this, but uh, something that parents not only are interested in besides answering the question, what's the best college or university that I can send my son or daughter to? They're interested in finding out how can I do this as cheaply as possible. Well, we have a full ride list 
placed on our website too so that any parent uh, uh, can access this. They can look at any in-state college or university and see the information as to what is it does it take as far as a, a grade point average or an ACT score or does it take a combination or an index of the two for my son or daughter to get in a certain college or university and then also will they if they meet this will they get a scholarship or a full ride to, uh, a free ride to college if you will well we have that information on our website too so we're trying to make sure that once the, a student takes the ACT, we don't, it, it's too late for there to be any surprises at that point. We want, if any needed remediation needs to take place, we need to try to make sure that it's there. We don't want the parents sending their children to college or a university having to take remedial courses where they're not prepared. We want to make sure that we get this remediation in the early grade levels so that when your son or daughter is at the middle school or junior high grade levels, they're already focused on what advanced placement courses am I going to be taking or how many college hours can I accumulate. And by the way, at Pikeville High School, we're thankful to say that that's up to 29 college credit hours your son or daughter can accumulate before a diploma is placed within their hand. And we're excited about that. That's a phenomenal, phenomenal opportunity. We're running buses each and every day to the University of Pikeville to offer these opportunities to your son or daughter. And we just, we're, we want to do everything that we can to make sure not only that they're at, they're where they should be, but that they're above that as we seek continuous improvement. So thank you. Yeah. Um, I'll end and just add slightly to that. Um, I'll go back to the video that, um, that that Louisville had put out to Jefferson County. Some of the, the three statements that it just kind of keep sticking in my mind is we're expecting more of them. We must expect more of ourselves. These are our kids. This is our legacy. This is their future. To be a part of the solution. Um, talking with teachers, uh, talking with other staff, uh, some of the ideas that what parents can do the very the simplest thing that we all can do and Mr. Green and myself both are parents is that we show a value for education in our home um, that can have probably the largest impact on a student's desire to do well in education um, demand high levels of performance not only of your student but of your school um, you know as a teacher and now as an administrator in our system um, it always stings a little bit when someone's pushing you, but I always went away with a little smile because it let me know that they're wanting us to improve and then it was my job now to try to meet that challenge. And then share the responsibility of educating your child, for instance, like we mentioned, by doing these things, you know, knowing what is expected. So like we mentioned with the core standards, communicating questions to the, to the school and the, and, and the staff. Don't let unanswered questions go unanswered. And um, Access Infinite Campus, uh, Ms. Stewart, our college, uh, count, or, I mean our high school counselor, uh, is constantly, her and Ms. Asbury, updating uh, the, the Infinite Campus portal for scholarship opportunities like Mr. Green mentioned, uh, mission deadlines, those sorts of things. The same thing is happening with the elementary on a different level as far as announcements and deadlines. Um, and then also consistently look at your student's progress report, whether it be like we mentioned with test reports, or all, but also with infinite campus reports. I think it's fourth grade and up. They can begin, uh, parents can begin to look at those reports for students on infinite campus. And then be aware of extended school services. The elementary does some daytime ESS. Our junior high and our high schools do after school ESS services. Also, many, many teachers if the student or the parent is asking for extra help after class or after school, they're going to do that for you. And so additional um, tutoring opportunities if needed afterwards. And then also the Family Resource Center. Be aware of what opportunity or what um, resources are available there. Not only maybe just supplies for school, but also as an advocate for you and how to ask questions or where to go to. And um, I'm, I'm going to end up with that. Um, any final comments that you have, Mr. Green? Just uh, want to say thank you for uh, the time that you put in on this on this presentation. Uh, we hope that it's been informative to our stakeholders. 
we just feel blessed. Uh, we feel blessed to work in the school district. We feel blessed to have parents and community members that care. Education is valued in the city of Pikeville, and we're thankful for that. We're thankful that it, it, it's not stereotypical Eastern Kentucky, uh, that there's an emphasis on the bar being set high here, and it's quite a task for our school district to try to meet that bar, quite honestly, and we feel that pressure to do so. But we've got the most important commodity uh, that we're responsible for and entrusted with, and that's your son or daughter your nephew, your niece, your grandchild, and and we're well aware of that. So we want to make sure that we provide them with every opportunity possible. There's no substitute for what Mr. Belcher said earlier. Whatever mom and dad values or that grandparent or whomever the guardian is at home, if that student sees the value you place on education, it will be so important to them also. And there's no substitute for that. We can try to provide every additional uh, platform or every uh, additional supplement that we can, but nothing will take the place of that. But them seeing that importance that your home places on education. So we're thankful that you do place such a high standard on education and the results of our students. And we want to work with you. And again, it, we're, we're a school district of distinction, and we're certainly proud of that. But those other school districts that met that same level, they're working just as diligently as we are, I assure you, of trying to shave every point off that they can to try to improve. But it's, it's not just about that. It's in, and regardless what we want to compete in, we want to do well, we want to win. But the real goal is making sure that that student, every student that walks across the stage at Pikeville High School is ready to win in the real world. We want to thank you, hope that this has been informative, and wish you a very special and Merry Christmas. There are simple problems with simple solutions and there are complex problems with not so simple solutions. Some problems can be solved in a few seconds. Some problems haven't been solved in decades. Like why our country continues to fall behind other developed nations in math, reading, and science. Across our nation, colleges and universities are finding millions of high school graduates each year who aren't arriving with skills necessary to succeed, in need of hours of remedial courses just to catch up. And in the working world, employers say many high school students aren't equipped with the tools they need to start their careers. Kentucky remains behind much of the nation in post-secondary preparedness. In Jefferson County, less than half of our students are graduating college and career ready. This has brought our country to a crossroads. Assign blame to the problem or solve it. The solution to the education equation began with a collaboration unlike anything ever seen in our country's educational history. For years, states held their own assessments based on their own standards, creating inequality across the country. And even those states believed to be high achievers fell short in comparison to other developed nations. What resulted was a simple concept, an ambitious concept, a new compass for education, all states adopting a common set of rigorous standards, standards aligned in such a way that students graduate prepared for post-secondary education, standards that allow states to determine how they stack up against each other and the world. With the support of local districts and their communities, Kentucky was the first state to adopt the new national standards. Kentucky had a choice. Kentucky chose to lead. Which group of students did we want to ask to wait to begin preparing to be college and career ready? This is a new way of learning, a new way of teaching, and a new path to academic achievement. The standards were developed to meet the same level of rigor as some of the top performing places in the world, like Japan and Singapore. 
They were developed by teachers, researchers, and leaders in higher education and business, people who know where students need to be to succeed. This isn't the latest fad. This is a new era in education. The first two standards introduced in the classroom were for reading and mathematics. Next year, we'll add science and social studies. The new standards challenge my students to a greater depth of understanding. Instead of memorizing facts and formulas, they develop critical higher level thinking when approaching content so they can tackle tougher concepts as they progress. Yeah, they are tougher standards. A lot tougher. A lot tougher. They push me to my limits. The curriculum is more rigorous for all students at all levels. For all students. Because I'm not teaching subjects in isolation anymore, my students get the answer to that age-old question, when am I ever going to use this, on a daily basis. And most importantly, the standards create a staircase of increasing complexity, ending in college readiness. So when I graduate, so when I graduate, so when I graduate, I'm prepared for both college and career. Kentucky was the first state to adopt the Common Core state standards. What you may not know is that Kentucky was the first to test on them. At the end of the 2011-2012 school year, and now we wait to see our new scores, how we stack up against the standards. Be forewarned. There will be some shock and confusion when parents receive the scores in the mail. There really is no way to accurately compare the new K-PREP test with the previous Kentucky Core Content Test. However, we expect that in the short term, proficiency rates among students will be lower than what we've seen on the old test, perhaps anywhere from a 10 to 40 point drop. Not because our students became less educated over the last year, but because the bar has been raised. Our charge is to get our students to reach the higher standard. The bar is high, but it can be reached. The question is, what are we willing to do to get there? JCPS has adjusted its curriculum to make sure that it is aligned with the standards and the district's vision that all students graduate prepared. It is a part of the district's vision 2015 strategic plan that plan has four focus areas. Increased learning, graduation and beyond, safe supported schools, and stakeholder involvement. All four of these areas and the corresponding 36 strategies specifically addressed areas of need that will help our students reach their full potential. But they cannot do it alone. You are a part of this new equation. I need your support. I need your support. I need your support. Whether or not you have a student in your family, what happens in our schools affects you. If our schools succeed in creating a more educated workforce, our community will be more competitive in the global marketplace. More businesses will take a more serious look at Louisville. More people at work means a growing economy. And that benefits all of us. This is about being a part of something bigger than ourselves. And it will take all of us to help our kids reach our goals. Teachers. Students. Parents. Policymakers. Community leaders. And the business community. Everyone has a role in this team effort. Get involved and let's support all of our students. We're expecting more of them. We must expect more of ourselves. Everyone working together for a common goal making common core work for Louisville. The bar has been raised, the goal must be met. These are our kids, this is our legacy, this is their future. This is my future. My future. My future. Be a part of the solution.